This conference will now be recorded. Thank you. Today is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023, and I'd like to call today's city council meeting to order. If we could please rise to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, may I have roll call? Councilmember Fox. Absent and excused. Councilmember Boyle. Here. Councilmember Casberg. I am here online. Councilmember Leha. Present. Councilmember Servany. Present. Mayor Strobin. Here. Thank you, Clerk. All right. Can we please have public comments from the audience, Clerk? Melissa Flat. Good evening, Melissa Flat with the Center United. I'd like to first start by saying thank you to the City of La Center and um, to our Chief of Police. We did drug cake back on the 28th. We only had 21 participants, so we were down from our 54, but we had 61 pounds of medications um, returned, and last year we had 109 in April. So I think it was a really nice day. Um, people were out at the pumpkin patch, but in that location, it helped so many people, you know, drove past. We also uh, distributed seven lock boxes, so people can lock up their meds at home, so that was nice. I still have 193. So we'll be distributing those at events that we do. Um, Her and Bob town. can get Bob. You and Bob can get together on the, uh, the lock, right? steering wheel locks. Well, we only had 21 people, <laughs> so a third of them took them. We um, we do have our um, legislative process training coming up on Monday the 13th. That'll be at the community center at 5:30. So I'm sure everybody here voted. So if you voted, now you can come to the training and learn how to use your voice and make a difference directly with the legislature. I have flyers up there. It will be on Zoom and in person because my trainer is coming in from Spokane. But I think I have a couple people coming down from a Washington or Olympia as well. So you can come in either way. I have a lot of coordinators who are interested in this. And then on the 18th again is the Breakfast with Santa. So I have, um, yeah, we've, we've got it figured out. Still looking for a few volunteers and griddles. And other than that, we are good to go and we'll have lock boxes there for parents. All right. I think that's everything for now. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on the drug take back. In six months, that's still a lot of weight that came in. So that's good. Thank you. Al Phila. Al Phila, 152 West 15th Street. I want to wish, well, congratulate everybody who won their elections. You know, even even the mayor, even though he didn't have anybody running against him, that's a good job. Uh, and I want to wish everybody a happy Veterans Day. I also want to take note that we lost Don Anderson over the weekend, uh, local veteran, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
you know, you, I get it's mound all day, but I'm not going to. You're a great guy. Okay, what I the consent agenda. God, I hate this consent agenda because it always got stuff in there that you know you're spending our money, and you know if you're not careful, you know it could be on something you're not you're not really for. And so I'm hoping everybody's really did their uh, due diligence. But uh, on it, we've got an inter interlocal agreement on climate planning. And I don't know about you, but I've talked about climate change with people and wow, it's kind of up for debate. You know, there's some people that think it's hogwash and there's some people that think it's, oh yeah, it's happening. We got to do everything. You know, and here we are spending $5,000 on planning for it. Well, if a lot of people haven't made up their mind about it, you know, you're spending that money that people don't really think should be spent that way. And so I thought maybe we take that out of the consent agenda if somebody wanted to and uh, talk about that a little bit. Okay, well, I, I think that's about it. Thank you and God bless America. Thank you, Al. And I'm sure we can have somebody give you a call and discuss that as well. There's no more cards from the audience. <laughs> Thank you, Clerk. All right. Any public comments from those calling in, please press star six to unmute yourselves. State your name and address, please. Yes, this is Kimberly Goheen Elbin. Am I on? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I'm a life citizen of Clark County, Washington, USA, and I've lived here over 30 years where my mother was born here in Los Angeles, Washington. So with a legal vote of the citizens, we have a new council that are voted into public service to serve and represent we the people. We must serve our neighbors here locally and uh, in our ever so growing community. And that's another big issue with the Growth Management Act that this city needs to get out of and does not need to comply with because you, you make a lot of money on that, just as Al, Al was mentioning. So there is a money stream in there. And I'll ask that this council adhere to what we, the people, care about and are, listen to our ideas and our concerns. I'm asking this council to remove the yellow fringed flag and replace it with the American flag of peace or the American flag of freedom, whatever you want to call it. It's the one without the yellow fringe. And it's time with a new beginning. Um, so the maritime flag the one with the fringe is nice, but it suggests international law. And so I'm going to suggest that very sincerely, and I hope that you'll consider it. And the climate change is happening, of course, and I'm not going to go into that. But I do ask people to listen to or go online to geoengineeringwatch.org. That's geoengineeringwatch.org, and you will read the whole real truth of what's going on we've polluted uh, our earth to death practically. With that said, I am gonna address the climate action plan, which is a farce. All the severability in the world isn't gonna help you guys, or I, I don't mean you guys personally, of course, but the people that comply to this agenda of using our hard-earned tax dollars, criminal Biden started it with his American rescrew plan, and then all through that, you guys, this big government here in, uh, in Clark County, actually, all of it, I also spoke at Vancouver four or five times uh, Monday night and then Clark County yesterday. And so there are some issues and they know that what I'm saying is, um, <laughs> believe me, you guys ought to listen to it. It was something else. Uh, anyway, we want to straighten the, the, our government out. Our local government needs to stand up for the people. We do not want to comply to any of this. And you, as uh, in is my mind, the center of the universe, we need to start it here now. And that's what I'm going to ask. Get out of the Growth Management Act. Don't comply because, frankly, you're using our monies to build more homes for illegal immigrants. And that's what's happening here in Clark County. And uh, we just don't need that anymore. We are not going to be able to feed our own people. We can't educate our kids for three years. And then we're expected to have 
uh, different lang languages in and everything. We're taking away our heritage here, and you need to listen to we the people, and I'm one of those. So I'm asking. I have a stern voice. I get that. Wrap you know, people can still love me, but thank you very much. Thank you. Let's make America godly. Any other public comments from those calling in, please press star six to unmute yourself, state your name and address. Clerk, are there any public comments to be read? There were none. Thank you. That moves us on to the consent agenda. If there are no requests for any items to be removed, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Um, can we remove 1.5.3 interlocal governmental agreement on climate, climate planning? Any others? You're okay with it? Um, so can I still make a motion? To... Well, we can, we can definitely remove that. Yeah, can we move that? All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can I get a motion for the consent agenda minus or striking 1.5.3, please? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Thank you, Council. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Did he say aye? Okay. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you, Council. Council Member Casper, I can barely hear you. Um, you may have to shout. I know you're out in the woods, but if you could shout, that'd be great. Oh, no, okay. actually, I think I forgot to click the mic, but I <laughs> held up my hand like that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. We do have a presentation tonight. Uh, and that will be the 2024 proposed budget, and Senior Accountant Riley Barbera will be presenting. Riley? All right. So, uh, so far we've had the capital budget presentation, we had the preliminary budget presentation, we had a revenue hearing, and for those lucky enough to be on the budget advisory committee, we had three more of those meetings. Uh, so, if you guys are getting kind of tired of hearing about this, I get it. I kind of am too. Uh, so I'm going to keep this fairly brief uh, this evening. There really haven't been a lot of changes since my last presentation, but not everybody pays as much attention. So there might be some new folks. So we can't just skip the whole thing. Uh, but without further ado, uh, one more draft of the proposed budget. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, this will be the one we vote on unless there's any feedback we have. I don't think I'm going back and any make, making any more changes at this point. Uh, I have updated the year-to-date column as well as the 2023 projections. Uh, some of the things I kept the same in the projections because I was working on other things at the time. But uh, overall, this is a pretty good look at how things are going to be. There's only a couple months left in the year. So as we discussed at the last one, the property tax for next year is down to 691. Uh, and that still could change a little bit. I think we get some things pretty late when we actually certify it, but that should be fairly close uh, there. Um, overall, there were some slight changes here and there, uh, but we're at a net $13,000 less than the uh, than my last presentation, but it's the same as the revenue hearing. So these are all things that you have seen. Um, overall, uh, let's see, what do I have here? Oh, yep, already went over that, great. So, uh, but we're looking at being over budget in our, uh, in our revenue this year. So things are looking pretty good there. So one of the main things that has been changed uh, going across multiple departments is we actually got our quote in from AWC. They're our insurance provider. Uh, and that's just a big lump sum payment that we pay at the beginning of the year. Uh, it ended up being a decent bit higher than we had expected, uh, mainly in the police department. Uh, it's based on our hours that we report to LNI between Q2 2022 and Q1 2023. Uh, so we were thinking we're going to have a big drop from a lack of police department, but that's not going to really show up until next year as far as that reduction in hours goes. Uh, and then another big part of it is just based on the property that we own and insuring things like that. So, Riley, Riley wasn't that a 25% increase? It was in somewhere insurance? around there, yeah. Just so the council knows. Uh, so overall, 
uh, the total across everything went up from $139,500 to $175,000. And really quickly, we are talking with AWC and they are going back to their board of directors to try to get that lowered, but we're sticking with the number that we've been given in the budget. So uh, there was that increase in this. Otherwise, the finance department, uh, these numbers look the same as last uh, time. Uh, 3.7 full-time employees, we've got an audit next year. Uh, it's always fun, and uh, the new outreach coordinator is a new full-time employee in uh, in this department. Uh, on to the legislative department. This one looks the most different compared to last time, uh, and that is because I had neglected to put in the federal lobbyist that we had. Uh, we already had that contract signed, but it didn't make it into the last draft. Uh, and AWC is up as well. So uh, overall. We're up, uh, let's see, a little over $60,000 in this department compared to the last RAF that you had seen. Uh, but 57,000 of that was a federal lobbyist that you guys already knew about. It's not exactly anything new there. Uh, and so that services line, there's really only four things in that federal lobbyist, state lobbyist, grant writer, and AWC. Those make up about 80% of that total department. So on to the municipal court. Uh, there has been no changes since this last one, uh, since the last presentation, I guess. Pre differences from this, uh, the 2023 budget, biggest one being the Battleground Municipal Court contract dropped from 122000 to about 85000 uh, And that's because they just haven't been sending a lot of people to court over the last couple of years. It's on like a three-year rule on average. On to the police department. Uh, this one, their AWC number is up quite a bit. Uh, because I had thought that we were going to get a, quite a bit of discount there for not actually having any police officers, but I think we'll see that uh, reduction next year, in theory. Uh, as far as I know, the Cowlitz contract is still in negotiations, um, and that that Cowlitz contract, about $1.1 million, that really makes up the bulk of this department, which really makes my job a lot easier as far as budgeting and recording things go. Planning and community development. Um, only change since last one is the AWC. Um, as we mentioned last time, there was the new part-time code enforcement. Uh, that's a part-time position. Uh, Brian, did you have any input on that? Yeah, so the idea behind this position is a, a part-time uh, position that will be solely dedicated to code enforcement work. Uh, currently, that work falls amongst uh, a variety of staff, including myself, uh, John Wilson, our building official, um, and our planner. So the, basically the, the workload is such um, with the number of cases that we're getting in through our new online reporting system that it's kind of a challenge to be uh, as prompt as we'd like to be on some of those. And um, the thought was that uh, we're sort of reached the, uh, the level of um, ongoing code enforcement complaints to address um, that we need a dedicated person to, uh, at least a part-time person to uh, focus on that work. And there's that. And then Public Works, AWC is up. Uh, you'll notice the 2023 projections. There's a bit of a change on the transfers out uh, for that roads and streets fund. Uh, and that was just due to an error in my own calculations on how I had done that. So uh, I think I've got that kind of cleared up for how that's going to all shake out at the end of this year. Um, but really no changes from the actual expenditures and revenues that are going to be in that uh, from the last time we've looked at this. So. <clears throat> Bringing us to the big grand total. Uh, no longer can say that we're at a surplus. Uh, it's at about a $58,000 deficit. Um, but really, we've had a $1.4 million surplus last year and a one, looking at a $1.1 million surplus this year. So we're not just a you know, dragon sitting on a big pile of gold. We're actually putting your money to use. We're not just stacking it up there. So but don't think of it as you know just uh, wasting your money. Think of it as putting your money to work. It's a pretty small surplus. Uh, I don't exactly know what the percentage is on there. And we're often pretty conservative in our estimates. So I wouldn't be shocked if that actually does end up with a surplus next year. Uh, another thing I kind of want to point out on this is some kind of confusing terminology. We're talking about the general fund here. And if you look at the bottom, the bottom three lines are the beginning fund balance, the surplus deficit, and the estimated ending fund balance. So the general fund right now has about, uh, let's see, about three million, three and a half million dollars in its fund balance. 
that often gets referred to as its reserves, which is a little weird because our next fund is the reserve fund. And that, so you can't just call it fund balance because they don't think of the reserve fund as well. So those are just kind of seemingly interchangeable terms, um, but they're very different things, I guess you would say. So when we were saying that that $58,000 is gonna come out of the general fund reserves, it's money that has been stockpiled in this because we don't spend it every year and is, yeah, in our checking account more or less. And we are working on putting some better investment strategies to have less surplus cash on hand, but liquidity and not losing capital is our kind of main priority. But into the reserve fund, which is another way to look at our reserves, this is money that really is kind of put away for a rainy day, you might say. Our reserve policy is to have one year's of general fund expenses on hand. Uh, we're about 1% away from uh, having that in our estimated end of year next year. We're uh, off by about $57,000. There is a change in this one in our interest in dividends. Uh, I think since the last time we had spoke, we had done another bond reinvestment. Uh, and that's gonna bring us about $85,000 in dividends next year, about half of which is going into the reserve fund. And we're gonna have another bond that's coming up in December that'll get reinvested, but uh, I don't know what that's gonna be yet, so I've kind of left that out. So in theory, we'll probably be seeing a little bit more than that in these interest in dividends next year. Uh, so our reserve reserves, we're just uh, investing in what we can, but we're pretty restricted on what you're allowed to invest in. We're not gambling your money in the stock market. These are on federal U.S. Treasury funds, things like that. Um, with just to clarify, with reserve funds, are those, um, I'm trying to think of how to word it, can these be allocated to any department in the city or is it? Um, I think that would need a action from the council to do so. I can't just say, hey, I want to go buy a new cop car, so I'm going to take money out of the reserve fund. Uh, it's it's restricted. Uh, restricted revenue is kind of what we call it, restricted okay. fund balance. So it would need an active council to transfer money out of this fund uh, to spend it on anything else. So you guys can say that we want to spend it on anything that you can legally spend it on, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, it's just kind of there in case you know, all the car groups shut down or something drastic happens where we're really hurting for money. This is kind of there to yeah, make sure we stay afloat. Right on. On to the impact fees fund. Uh, this one does look quite a bit different. After my last presentation, I was informed that we cannot actually transfer our traffic impact fees to the roads and streets fund, uh, even though they do have to be included in the roads and streets report at the end of the year uh, and just like there's specific you know uh, Washington state law that says you have to have a roads and streets fund there's also a Washington state law that says you have to have your impact fees held in a separate fund uh, so for the time being those are going to stick in the same impact fees fund we've kind of been discussing having the split between a park impact fees fund and a traffic impact impact fees fund um, but I think the easier thing to do is keep them in the same one and just do a, a little bit better job of giving reports on how much is the balance in each one, how long we have to spend these. Because they are have, I think it's about a 10 years after you collect an impact fee until you have to spend it. Um, but other than that, there haven't been any changes to our estimates for next year as far as how much we're collecting or the projects that will be spent uh, with impact fee eligible monies. And uh, so of that 5.4 that we're looking at having at the end of the next year, um, or I guess 4.9 at the end of this year, that's about 4.3 million is traffic impact fees and about 600,000 is park impact fees. Uh, on to the capital projects fund. Uh, I think the only change since last time is uh, there was a retention payment. Um, and that's a whole complicated process that I don't expect any of you to get because it's been explained to me a few times and I'm still kind of barely grasping it. But essentially we're holding some money that we haven't been able to pay out on a project uh, that was in our budget for this year. Uh, it doesn't sound like that payment is going to be made this year, so that is pushed off until next year. Um, so not any new projects or anything, but just gonna happen next year instead of this year. All right, so, uh, this is the kind of the better detail of these capital projects instead of just one line that says capital projects. These are all the, the big things that we're spending your money on. Uh, the exciting things on the, are on the top, the park things that you could actually do, you know, the kayak docks, the uh, 
things like that. But uh, Brian had a much better presentation on all these capital projects. Uh, so I'll just, we'll leave it with his if you want to refer it back to something. Vehicle and Equipment Fund, uh, no changes since last time. This one's pretty small. Only getting a couple things next year. Not much to say on that one. Uh, the Roads and Streets Fund is no longer has the transfers in from the uh, from the traffic impact fees, so it's going to have a pretty small balance. And the reason is is the restricted money that we get, which is from the gas tax uh, and the MVFT things like that, that we can only spend on roads and streets stuff. We realistically we spend more on roads and streets than we have restricted money for, and that's kind of how we got away with it not being too big of a deal that we didn't actually have this fund as we knew that we were spending more than we were getting in. But uh, so we have to have it kind of supplemented it with extra transfers in from the general fund. Sewer operations, uh, there was an increase in AWC as I've mentioned a number, number of times and also an adjustment to the excise tax we have to pay. Uh, since this is a uh, enterprise fund, we do have to pay some excise taxes on the, uh, the money that we're bringing in. And I think I hadn't updated that since their last change to the uh, sewer development charges uh, estimates. So that went up about 2,500 bucks, pretty small amount. But uh, overall, this one, this is a department that runs, or not a department, a fund that runs pretty lean. Um, but uh, I think we're working on putting together a sewer comprehensive plan to see if we should be increasing rates. Uh, because that is a pretty small fund balance in there. So if something big does go wrong, it doesn't necessarily have a whole lot of uh, extra available to cover things. With the, or no, now Super Capital next. Uh, so the capital projects, I, it looks like I neglected to include them in here, this report, but uh, they're the same as the last report, the same one that Brian had discussed a while ago. Uh, bypass pump, control meter, turbidity meter, lab equipment, and the pump station. The sewer debt service fund is the one that was to pay a loan for the expansion of the sewer fund. Uh, so in theory, if there's any catastrophic things that happen, this is probably where any funds would be paid out of. So uh, we're not going to go bankrupt if something does happen. This one still does have some uh, some wiggle room in it, but we're deciding on how to best uh, spend this or pay it some outstanding loans or keep it for future development. Stormwater, slight change in AWC. Other than that, all the same um, as my last presentation. And again, this is another one that has a pretty small running fund balance in it. Um, the fees that we bring in are, you know, 10 something dollars a pop. So we're not raking in the millions here. We're not racking up a huge fund balance. And uh, when there's big projects like this storm pipe lining, uh, it really does make a huge dent. Um, but overall, this is all, all stuff you've seen and heard before. And then finally, the everything in one picture, which you really can't fit on one page, but it's kind of hard to show it any other way. So get out your magnifying glass when you take it home <laughs> if you really want to see everything all at once. Uh, just kind of one thing to point out uh, in the expenditures, in the operating line, uh, overall between all these funds, we're at about $5.7 million. Uh, and about 48% of that uh, goes to the city staff here. Um, and we're not millionaires by any means. It's just we run a pretty tight ship. And uh, so just something to keep in mind when you're thinking of should we cut this, should we add this, really a lot of our money in the operating side of thing is just held up in those uh, salary and benefits. Um, and uh, that's all I got. Great report, Riley. Really last good. one will be the next one will be the last one. I'm excited to say. Yeah. <laughs> Until next year. <laughs> yeah. We have any questions or comments for Riley? No questions. It was a surprise to see the 25% increase, or roughly. So that's where a lot of the deficit did come from because we were at a surplus before. And then there was a few other minor corrections in there, just for transparency. All right. Thank you, Riley. Great report. All right, council and staff reports on ah, the mayor's report. Okay. Good evening. This Saturday, November 11th is Veterans Day. On this day, we honor those who have served our great country. Each day I look out my window and see the flag fly high 
and I have a feeling of pride that runs through me, not, not because I went to battle or because I wore a uniform, but because I or we honor those that fought for the stars and stripes waving in the wind. Serving has many different definitions depending on one's interpretation. For me, it not, it not only means the men and women in the armed forces, but also our first responders. They too put on their uniforms and serve this nation with one thing in common, putting others before themselves. So if you have served, can you please stand so that we may thank you? If you have served, please stand. And yes, I do know that poppy flowers are the official flower for it, but these were, I, I felt, appropriate. So thank you again. And that was unscripted and nobody knew. So, surprise. <laughs> All right. Um, December 1st, we'll start our, or we will be kicking off our Christmas, uh, Le Center Christmas Festival. Uh, that'll start with Santa House Calls. There is a website uh, that'll be posted on the reader board, and ALNA is also going to post it on their re reader board as well. We will have a family fun run, or a 5K Santa run, I believe. Uh, there will be lunch being served by the Lions Club, grilled cheese and tomato soup. We will have musical bands throughout the entire day. Uh, the festival is going to start, I believe, at 11.30. Is that, was it 11.30 that we confirmed it? Yes. Um, there will also be a matinee showing of the star at the Le Center Church. There will be a gingerbread contest for kids. Uh, there will be the live nativity scene. We will have, did I already say the military brass band? They will be playing as well throughout the day. There will also be uh, other schools and other venues coming in to sing as well. We will also have the Christmas Bazaar, which will be uh, coming in on Sunday as well as Saturday. Um, and then we will have uh, Santa visiting with children and light the Christmas tree and ending it with fireworks. It's going to be a very busy weekend, and I hope all of you can attend. If you do, please come say hi. I would appreciate it. Um, well, we still have one more meeting before Thanksgiving. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, and the coloring contest uh, pages are up there as well if you want to grab them. Oh, oh they are. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you are interested in the run as well, that'll be on the website with registration and such. And you're running, right? Uh, I'm walking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and then the, the bazaar is actually on Saturday as well. So it's a it's a full weekend of Christmas. Uh, it's going to be a blast. Um, do you have the website? Yes, it'll be on the reader board. Oh, okay. But it is uh, uh, lacentercristmasfestival.com, just so you know. And it has links to the bazaar and Santa's house calls. And I want to say that Santa's house calls will be uh, the first 250 people, and then it will be cut off at that point. But we will be having four fire trucks visiting houses, and uh, donations help uh, local people, as well as a quarter of them will go to Angels on Wheels as well. So with that, I will turn it over to council comments, or no, the attorney's report. Sorry, Sean. Thank you, Mayor. Council. How are you doing tonight? Good. Good. Glad to be here. Sean McPherson, for those who don't know me, I'm filled in for Bronson several times now and happy to be up here. Other than that, I have nothing particular to report. All right. Any questions for the attorney? All right. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> All right. Next up is council comments. Council member Kasberg. Okay. I clicked the microphone on this time. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Um, I apologize that I couldn't be there tonight, but I'm in the Tri-Cities currently um, at a at a work conference. So um, a lot of things going on over here right now. We're getting 
getting ready for the new legislative session coming up. It's going to be a short one. So trying to find out what it is that's going to be uh, brought back up again that that didn't make it through the uh, the session last time last time. So uh, the reason I bring that up is because I think we all need to, to pay attention to that. Um, there's going to be a lot of bills out there that you may or may not agree with. And I think you should share your opinions on those. Um, yesterday was was the uh, election day. And according to the Colombian, there was almost 21% of the eligible voters that that showed up, um, which I think is normal, but sad at the same time. Um, you know, I think that I think that we need to get that number up quite a bit. You know, 20% of the 300 and some thousand voters is is not enough. So we need those people's votes out there. Um, thank you to the veterans. It's coming up. Um, and I wanted to throw out there that uh, there's a annual Veterans Day parade in downtown Vancouver on Saturday. Um, I will be participating in that. So if you're out and about, swing by Officers Row down there and see the parade. I think that's all I have, though. So thank you. Does that start at 10, Casey? I believe it does. Um, yeah, it does. It, it yeah. does. Yeah. Thank you, okay, Councilman. And I have, a, uh, I have a pen here for you as well. Oh, thank you. Councilmember Boyle. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for doing your uh, civic duty and showing up and participating in our meetings. Uh, we appreciate the participation. Um, I know Al brought up the code enforcement thing tonight. Or not code enforcement, sorry. The uh, climate change. And I can't, I mean, I can't agree more. It is something, I mean, that I, I looked at and I, you know, I have my own thoughts about it, but seeing where it comes in as a whole, most of Clark County is participating in it. I mean, I guess there's reasons that we can stand out, and if that's what it, we need to do to do that, if, you know, for our own beliefs and where our money goes, I, I'm on board with that. So um, thank you for bringing that up. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, tonight, let's see. Yeah, we're just coming into that, you know, Thanksgiving uh, Christmas season, everybody kind of gets excited for that and the kids and all that stuff. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thank you to our veterans. Um, appreciate all you've done. And I think that's all I got for tonight. Thank you, Council Member Boyle. All right. Council Member Leah. Um, thank you for everyone that's for coming tonight. Uh, thank you to everyone that may be listening for voting for me <laughs> uh, with the elections yesterday. Um, and I want to say that um, thank you to Casper, Council for, am I on? <laughs> to uh, Cas uh, Council Member Casper for bringing up the Veterans Parade and my involvement in CMAC, Citizens Military Appreciation Committee. Um, I get these flyers regarding that, and it's the historic trust that's very involved in putting that on. So I brought a bunch of flyers. You can take a flyer or you can even take a picture of this and encourage people to go to that. Um, it's at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning and there was a lot of people. There'll be, it's going to be a beautiful parade and hopefully the weather will cooperate too. Um, I want to say that last uh, week I attended a Associated Washington Cities meeting in Longview. There was 35 of us attended that, and that was very interesting. They went around the room and talked about what the concerns were for their cities, and some of them it was um, homelessness. Um, and of course, for me, I said, well, the police is our number one for right now, but homelessness is an issue too. I understand that. Um, I also want to encourage people that are in the age group to attend Meals on Wheels on Thursdays. Um, that is a great, um, you know, event for people that are older and they get a chance to say, you know, meet some of their friends there and, and get some free food. It's a good time. 
Um, also, if there's anyone listening that would like to join Lions Club, that's a great organization, and we do a lot to help the city, and I'm part of that group. So um, I really encourage people to go, in, go to that. Also, I'd like to say go to the volleyball games and the football games. I went to that. I can't believe how fantastic our athletes are in the center. I was just at that volleyball game at um, that. Um, oh. King's I'm trying. Way. Yeah, King's Way. Thank you. <laughs> All of a sudden, um, King's Way was just yeah. Maria was there too. It was so exciting. You're just on pins and needles. One's ahead, the other one's ahead. So it was great. The football game was a great Friday night. So I just have to say that we really need to just really be connected with our school. They've just the teachers are doing well there. The principal, the superintendent, the kids are just doing great there at that school, and I really appreciate them. Um, also, a fun event that happened at A-Line-A yesterday, um, they're bringing in a rock and brews restaurant, which is supposed to open April 24th of 2024, and um, we actually got to see uh, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley of KISS, so they were there. That was a fun time, and uh, we really enjoy you know, all that the Collins Tribe is doing, and they really are generous to people, and They've been generous to our city and to our school, so I really thank them. Myrna was doing a lot of rocking out, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I so appreciate them. Yeah, they're great, great people. So um, I think that's everything. I had to make a list. I had so much stuff to say, <laughs> but thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Servany. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you everyone for attending this evening. As Al mentioned, we lost yet another one. Um, this past weekend, uh, Donnie Anderson was near and dear to many of us. He did um, a lot of things in the community quietly. Uh, he was very humble. And one of our, uh, I guess, in my heart it has always been with our veterans that suffer throughout their lives. And Donnie held uh, tight a lot of suffering for his um, fellow veterans while he was in the, the VA, in the hospital. And he didn't talk about it much. But it was something that um, was, was deep inside of him and he carried that, that, that pain, as many of our veterans do. And we don't see that from the outside. Um, so as Veterans Day approaches, I would encourage many of us to find some time to go to the VA, go to some of our care centers and visit with our veterans, spend some time with them. and express your heartfelt gratitude for all that they've done and share a few moments um, with them to let them know before they pass just how much they mean to us. On a brighter note, um, I was able to attend the arts reception, artist reception at the community center for, uh, Monday evening and uh, I'd like to thank the staff for putting together a very well-received um, evening. The artists are very excited about the opportunity to show their um, wonderful talents in the community, opportunity to um, enliven the community with their businesses, their small businesses, as well as their arts. Um, the opportunity to re-engage with the schools and share their talents. And I think it would be a, um, an excellent opportunity for all of us to really show that support um, to those artists and to the students and get everyone headed on a, a, a path. Not everyone goes off to um, college. Not everyone is talented with technical or math skills, but there's always something that you can find to spark an interest, and arts um, are one of them that gets overlooked and underfunded. 
And um, I think I would like to encourage all of us to really engage um, with the schools in that fashion as well. Um, we talk, we sit here and talk about sports all the time, but we don't talk about the lack of funding for our arts, drama, and um, all the other areas in our schools that, that go un, uh, unobserved. So let's open our eyes and, and really help where needed. Thanks. Thank you. We do have a staff report tonight, Public Works and Community Development. Mr. Brian Cast will be presenting. Brian. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, we have a pilot project that we completed um, on our sidewalks at Heritage Park. Uh, we had a company come out and do some grinding to reduce or eliminate trip hazards. Um, and this is a more cost-effective technique than um, you know, actually tearing out and replacing the concrete. That project went quite well. We actually had uh, folks from other surrounding jurisdictions come observe that. Um, and they're looking at also implementing it. So uh, our plan is to move forward next year with sort of expanding this sidewalk grinding program to other city-owned properties and eventually citywide um, to reduce those trip hazards on our sidewalks. Um, it is fall, and with fall comes uh, pruning work and turf maintenance, as well as uh, lots of leaf cleanup. So I just want to remind the uh, citizens, if you see any leaves blocking uh, storm catch basins, you know, please do what you can to shovel those out of the way to prevent localized flooding. We are out sweeping and picking up those leaves, uh, but often they fall down faster than we can get to them. So uh, any help that can be provided to, to stop water from uh, backing up and, and uh, help it get down those drains would be greatly appreciated. Uh, in preparation for winter, the staff and I have updated the city's snow and ice plan and we will be posting um, plowing maps and information for citizens about uh, how we prioritize roadways and what they can expect during a snowstorm to the website here very shortly. Uh, over on the wastewater plant operations side, um, we are well within our permit parameters. Um, we had completed a project that was on last year's capital project, uh, some upgrades to our the electrical system in the lift station down at the pump. And I want to uh, commend Jay and the wastewater staff for uh, bringing that project in uh, close to ten or one tenth the cost that we had estimated, um, thanks to some ideas that they had and some some work that they were able to do. Um, we completed that project for uh, two thousand four hundred dollars instead of the twenty thousand dollars we had budgeted. So um, appreciate their work um, in being um, good stewards of our city uh, public funds. Uh, over on the admin and safety side, uh, we're continuing to utilize our new safety skills uh, software that allows us to track and assign training to staff. Um, this most recently, we did a CPR training uh, with most staff in the city and also are working on fire extinguisher training right now. On the engineering side, uh, we are working with uh, the State Department of Transportation to finally get our design consultant um, going for the systematic citywide uh, safety project. That is a $800,000 grant that we received to design and construct um, improvements to keep people on the roads and stop them from departing on curves. Um, citywide so uh, next year we'll be constructing that it's taken quite a while to to get the contracts in place uh, with that state um, connection there uh, we're also working on uh, acquiring right-of-way currently at uh, the intersection of fourth and highland for the safe routes to school signal that is the first phase of our fourth street and breezy creek project that will be uh, starting at least getting a contractor on board and getting some equipment ordered next year on the building department side, uh, we have 265 building permits so far this year, including 84 new homes. And uh, out at the junction, the Minute Mart uh, is in the, some of their final inspections. They're under review right now for their kitchen hoods and, and gas. And uh, we're looking forward to that opening up here in the very near future. On to our community development map, uh, number one on the map. Uh, Lockwood Meadows subdivision uh, work is continuing out there. We did have uh, some some issues dealing with that heavy rain that we got a couple days ago and have made some changes as a result of that. 
um, but that construction is continuing out there and we're also working on um, our initial reviews for their final plat so that uh, they're ready to divide those lots up when construction is complete. Number 13, Stevens Hillside. We've finally uh, completed our final plat review and so construction of new homes out there will be beginning soon. I think we had some permits already come through the door on that one. Uh, number 37, ACES View Subdivision. Uh, works continuing out there as well, adjacent to the middle school. And lastly, uh, to highlight number 66, uh, the Barnhart property to the um, west of downtown here. Um, they are moving forward with their 60% petition. Um, it's actually late breaking news. They've submitted that um, and we're processing that and that'll be coming to council for a public hearing here in the very near future. With that, happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Um, I just had some questions. Uh, I was driving, well, I drive through there quite a bit, but Highland Terrace, where the undulations in the road are still an issue. I was just kind of wondering, is that going to get fixed or what's going on with that? Yeah, so that's a bit of a frustrating situation there. Um, obviously, they had some, some compaction and settlement issues. Um, we worked with them um, and took quite a bit of bugging over a, a long period of time. They actually finally got out there and repaired it, and then a week later we had problems again. So um, we have a two-year warranty on that project. We're going to continue to monitor that and, if necessary, extend that to make sure that that road's holding up. Uh, and that they fix what they need to um, and then based on the number of patches we've seen um, probably going to be working with them to overlay that area so that we have a, a decent road that we're getting and inheriting uh, for the public to take care of at the end of that warranty period. Is there at some point do we take that into our own hands if they're not following through with yeah, so we do have a bond that we can go after um, and we can contract that work ourselves. Um, you know, there's that takes some time as well. So, you know, our, we're, we've used that threat and that's actually how we got them out there to, to make the repairs last time. And, you know, if it comes to that, it comes to that. And we'll, yeah. we'll I mean, that. hopefully it doesn't have to come to that, but I just feel, I mean, the people that are building these grossly expensive houses nowadays, I mean, nobody has a choice and I you know, think they deserve to get what they paid for and we want our roads to be nice as well. So, yeah, absolutely. thank you. Any other questions for Brian? Thank you, Brian. Great report. All right. Um, we do not have any ordinances tonight. This is going to be a shorter meeting. Oh, I see smiles in the audience. <laughs> uh, we do have some unfinished business tonight, and that is 1.5.3, the interlocal agreement for climate planning. And Mr. Brian Cast will be speaking. Yeah, so uh, to follow up a little bit on that contract and that interlocal agreement with the county, um, the legislator passed uh, House Bill 1181. I can't remember if that was the last session or the one before that, but that requires that um, cities and counties that are subject to the Growth Management Act include uh, climate change elements in our comprehensive plan updates that we're uh, working on right now. It's a the 2025 update that we're working on. Um, so as a city under 3, or 6,000 people, um, we have the lowest level of, of requirements that we need to include, but we do need to uh, address uh, resiliency in our comprehensive plan. And that would be for how we deal with uh, extreme weather like heat waves, uh, wildfires, flooding, and, and other types of weather. So the, the concept here with this interlocal agreement is that the county um, is taking the lead on this and then all the cities are, are collaborating with them. Uh, so that $5,000 contract uh, is the city's share of the county's um, work that they will be doing on that. And uh, that $5,000 um, along with um, also a reimbursement for city staff time will all be covered by a, a state grant that um, we have applied for and received. So and I think like the name in itself is could have been worded better. I mean, it's slightly, I don't know, triggering to me, I guess. But it's not about climate planning. It's to me, it's to the way it's read to me is it's more of a disaster planning, I guess. You know, like we're, I mean, you can't. I guess it is weather caused, but 
Yeah, um, so that that's the element that we're required to do as a small jurisdiction. You know, larger jurisdictions uh, over 6,000 have some additional elements, and I think even larger ones than that have some. But um, there's some greenhouse gas requirements that you know were optional for us at a city at our size, so we elected to just do what we were required to do and keep it pretty uh, tight and, and simple and just do the required um, you know work that the state is telling us that we have to. And Brian, you did say that was uh, reimbursed, right? The, yes. The yes. full the five thousand dollars. Five thousand, as well as um, I was funding for uh, our staff and consultants' time as well. Cool. Okay. Um, if I can get a motion to put that back onto the consent agenda, Sean. Standalone motion. Standalone motion. Yeah, okay. Motion to approve. Okay, if I can get a motion to approve 1.5.3 interlocal agreement climate planning. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Motion passes. Thank you, Council. You register all the votes. No. Oh. <laughs> register all the votes. No. Oh. I thought he said yes. I didn't say anything. Oh, must have been Casey. I, I heard that. I am so sorry, Council. Got a computer. I must have heard together. Casey. Yeah. <laughs> it came out my ear here. Some Opposed. Calls. Opposed. All right. So it's uh, three to one. Motion three still one. passes. Yeah. yeah. Let me address that if I could. Please. And, and I was because like this is the second time I've uh, hey, hey. I've heard this. The uh, as particularly as we enter into budget season it's important that votes are registered. It's always important that votes are registered because if you don't vote, it's counted as an abstention. And that can have some impact, particularly for smaller councils. We have five, because you're required, you have to have at least three to adopt an ordinance, for example. And so if you abstain and you happen to have, have missing some folks and there's an ordinance that's up for adoption and you, for whatever reason, don't vote, mm -hmm. that could potentially impact your ability to adopt the ordinance. We'd have to go back and like figure out whether you have what you see, you know, if you actually said something. And so in budget season, it's also particularly important because there are some state laws that say you, there are particular types of budget amendments, for example, um, you have to have a majority plus one. Mm -hmm. And that's why you do your roll call votes. And so um, it's kind of interesting you, this just happened because it, it happened in another meeting I was at. <laughs> and I thought about bringing it up during the attorney comment, well, fortuitously, it happened, and so it's important that we all register our votes. And you can certainly abstain, um, but again, for a smaller council, um, that could create some potential issues. So, yeah, thought that was worth mentioning, particularly in budget season, because there are some hard and fast rules about that. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Is there any uh, new business? Seeing how there is no new business, can I get a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There we go. All right. <laughs> Motion passes. Thank you, Council. Meeting adjourned. I didn't know if my vote was going to be. I thought I heard you say yes. I did.